may not be what makes the world go round, it is what makes the ride worthwhile. Maybe that's why billions of people throughout the centuries have seen fit to dedicate an entire day to grand gestures of romance. With Valentine's Day, the only holiday best celebrated in pairs. its popularity, history doesn't give us any guarantees as to the origins of Valentine's Day. But we do know it contains vestiges of the early Christian church and ancient Rome. The association between mid-February and romance goes back to a pagan festival known as Lupercalia, likely honoring either Lupa, the she-wolf of Rome, who suckled Romulus and Remus, or Faunus, their god of fertility. The festivities began with an animal sacrifice. Then the ritualistic slapping of young women with strips of the animal's skin and blood to bestow fertility for the coming years. In the 5th century, perhaps in an effort to Christianize the pagan festival, Pope Gelasius declared February 14th as St. Valentine's Day. As for the real St. Valentine, there were reportedly several canonized by the church. Legend has it that one Saint Valentine, a defiant Roman priest, lived during the 3rd century AD under Emperor Claudius II. Claudius was an ambitious ruler. His battles required vast armies of men to abandon their young families for long periods of time, resulting in a military that was half-hearted and homesick. So determined was Claudius to stop love from sapping the will of his armies, he banned marriages altogether. Father Valentine thought the ban unjust and defied the emperor, continuing to marry young lovers in secret. The emperor eventually caught on to the priest's actions, arrested him, and sentenced him to death. It is believed that young couples he had secretly wed would visit his cell, passing him flowers and notes through the bars as symbols of their gratitude. The story continues that the condemned Father Valentine fell in love with his jailer's daughter. On February 14th, the day he was executed, it is said he passed the young girl a note. It was signed, from your Valentine. A tradition was born. Cupid, the winged matchmaker, started out as the Roman god of love, inspired the image of cherubs for Christians, and is now a favorite of card makers and mass marketers. Our modern Valentine's Day, removed from its religious and pagan past, has evolved into one of the most celebrated holidays on the calendar. On average, Americans shower their loved ones with 180 million roses, red ones naturally, and almost 36 million heart-shaped boxes of candy, not to mention all those cards, dinners, and diamonds. All told, the holiday brings in almost $14 billion annually, giving retailers plenty to love as well. But if you're worried that you can't afford to treat your loved one properly next Valentine's Day, take heart. The poets were right. Love is really all you need. Hello, I hope you're okay. So, welcome to my channel. So, I'm talking about this issue of Valentine. And I'm skeptical about it. And I hope you have learned something from that video we have just watched from the History Channel about origin, pagan origin of Valentine. So here is just additional information from the NPR journal. The dark origins of Valentine's Day. So that's a dark origin. So they write, Valentine's Day is a time to celebrate romance and love and kissy face filthy. But the origins of this festival of candy and cupids are actually dark, bloody, of course pagan, and a bit muddled. Mm. 
So it all began with the Romans, like I've seen in that video previously. So from February 13th, 15th, whereby February 14th falls in between, the Romans celebrated, that's in the ancient days, the Romans celebrated the feast of Lupecalia. The men sacrificed a goat and a dog. Then they whipped women with the hides of the animals they had just slaughtered. The Roman romantics were usually drunk, they were naked. Professor Noel Lenski of religion from Yale University hmm, says that the women, young women, will line up for the men to hit them because they believe that this will make them fertile. The brutal fete or festival include, included a matchmaking lottery in which young men will draw the names of the women from a jar or a container. The couple will then be coupled up for the duration of the festival or longer if the match was right. The ancient Romans may also be responsible for the name of our modern day of love, Valentine's Day. Emperor Claudius II executed two men who were both named Valentine on Feb 14th at different years in the 3rd century. Their martyrdom was honored by the Catholic Church with the celebration of St. Valentine's Day. So the Catholic Church actually canonized these people and so actually Valentine is a saint, is a Catholic saint. So the whole day spread. So later Pope Galatius, this Pope came later, he muddled things and he confused things in the 5th century by combining St. Valentine's Day with Lupercalia. So in other words, he combined the pagan Roman festivals of Valentine, which were in honor of their god Lupercalia. He combined them with Catholic or to honor St. Valentine's Day. So he combined the pagan and church day of honoring those two who are executed who are now called St. Valentine's but the festival was more of a theatrical interpretation of what it had once been it was a little more of a drunken revel but the Christians put clothes back on it but that didn't stop it from being a day of fertility and love so even today even though there's no not too much bloodshed but it's still a festival of fertility and love because so much love making occurs even today on this day of Valentine's. Around the same time, the Normans, who are some of you Germans, they celebrated Galantine's Day on this day. Galantine, Galantine meant lover of women. So this was also similar to St. Valentine's, which was from Rome. As years went on, this holiday grew more sweeter and Shakespeare romanticized it in, the, in his book, among others. And it gained popularity throughout Britain and the rest of Europe. Handmade paper cards became tokens of love in the Middle Ages. Eventually the tradition made its way to the New World. As we know, England brought it to Africa and even America. With the National Revolution, factory cards were made to symbolize love on this day. So we have Valentine, Valentine's Day cards. Today, this holiday is a big business. It has been commercialized by many. And many people can actually blame you for not sending them these cards. So it has, people still mark, it's a big deal even today. But you see from this website, and even the video you have seen, Valentine's Day is not as innocent as it seems. Hmm? It has a pagan, it's a pagan festival with a pagan fast. A pagan festival with a pagan past. Full of darkness and bloodiness. Actually, it's a day of honoring the Roman pagan god Lupercalia, among others. So think about that as we approach this Valentine's Day. And I hope you remain skeptical and I hope you have learned he something here about this Valentine's Day. I'd like to see your comment and that's all for today. Thank you very much.